everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now, for this video, it's sort of a soap challenge video, but kind of not really. This month's challenge is something I haven't really got time to attempt this month. I'm really quite busy, and it's quite a, what looks like a technique that's quite filly and going to take up quite a bit of time. But what I'm going to do is one of the elements of the channel, of, of the challenge, sorry, is to do a pull through soap. So I'm going to do the pull through aspect of it just because, gosh, let me think. I, I, I did a pull through sort of like when I was quite new to soaping, sort of in my first sort of four or five months of soaping. And I, and I haven't done one since. So <laughs> I really never really done them. So I thought I would just do that aspect of it. Now, I already have an acrylic mould. Now, this isn't a, really an acrylic mould. All it was is I went to an acrylic shop, or well, it was online actually, just got a metre of acrylic tube in the diameter that I wanted it and asked them to chop it into pieces. So therefore I've got a number of acrylic tubes that work really well. And I just actually put some cling wrap on the bottom just to seal the bottom and that works perfectly for all sorts of things that I need it when I make a round soap. So there's my mould prepared. What else do we need? Squeeze bottles. Now, you don't need squeeze bottles. You can just pour into the mould. But the ad advantage of having a squeeze bottle is that you can drop your soap in a bit more accurately with your squeeze bottle than if you just try and pour it in. And the more accurately you can get that soap in the middle and get a nice round pool of soap, then the better your design is going to come out. Now, to make that accuracy a little bit easier, what we're going to do is extend the reach of the squeeze bottles by popping on some little extenders. Now, all these are, are pipettes that have been chopped up. Now, I just reuse mine time and time again. I've had these for ages and I've used them numerous times and just wash them up each time. So do make the effort to do that. And it's quite good sometimes if you've got had, say, a plastic pipette, maybe you've used it for measuring out some fragrance oil or something and you're unsure about getting it clean again. Chop the little barrelly bit off of it and then you can get these bits really lovely and clean and then you can use them for something like extending your squeeze bottles if you need to do that. Okay, to extend these squeeze bottles, I'm just going to take the pipette, pop it over the end of the nozzle. That's clearly not going to stay there on its own, so I've just got some tape. Masking tape will do. I've just got some electrical tape. Really? You want a tape that's sort of quite flexible, so that's why masking tape is good. I just don't have any. So I'm using this electrical tape because that's flexible. If you've only got normal basic sellotape, that will work as well. It's just not as easy to wrap around because it's a bit stiff. Okay, so let's plop those on. I never line my squeeze bottles. I know a lot of people do. They use those sort of liners you get out of packing, you know, the little airfield pillows. I find with the liners is that it's great when they start off, but after a while the liner gets all in the way of how you're squeezing. So I'd much prefer to have a clear squeeze bottle. And then I just, I just wash them out with some brushes afterwards. Okay, so there's my bottles ready. And then the other thing is a pull through tool. Now you can buy these all over the place, um, they're really quite popular. Um, a good place if you want some good quality pull through tools is Love Your Suds. I'll put a link in the description below. I don't sell them in my shop just because it's it's kind of something I've never really got into and because I don't make enough of these soaps I always like to test the tools that I'm going to produce and put in the shop to make sure I'm really happy with the results. So as I don't really make this type of soap, I, I've never got around to testing them, so therefore I don't put them in my shop because I don't feel I have the experience to say, this is a fantastic tool, whereas with my other stuff, I do tend to do that because I know I've used them myself and I know how well they work. So go to someone like Love Your Suds, that sort of thing is a really good place to buy these because she's the original creator of these tools and you'll get some good tools that will really work well for you. Now I've <laughs> sniced mine up a bit, look at that, how swanky is that? Now the first time I did, and the only other time I did a pull through, it was sort of in the days before these actual tools were really very popular. And what I used is a 
pickles strainer and that was that was the thing that you did in those days you know the, the strainer that comes in you get your pickles your gherkins and it, you pull it out and it, it's a strainer like that <laughs> use that work fine but you can do it all sorts of things you can cut it out of some plastic or whatever you don't have to have a snazzy tool now what I've done is I've produced mine I've just a uh, random guess I looked at some people doing some stuff on YouTube and whatever and looked at some designs and thought I don't know what design I want <laughs> I don't really I, I just haven't done these enough to know what a pattern which design makes so I thought well, this is something I can draw quite easily on my computer. So I drew this design. And what I've done with mine is I I decided to go for having the poles on the outside. And again, no real reason why. Sometimes you'll see them with a pole in the middle and sometimes on the outside. I wanted a hole in the middle of mine so I can end up with a nice little circle in the middle. So I just went for this design, drilled a few holes in it, and these are just like little bamboo skewers that I've put in, so that can go in. And then I thought, rather than trying to attach bands or anything, as I was printing out this, I just printed out a little top thing, and that way I can then keep those all nice and level for me. I'm actually going to just make sure they're kept level, just do a little bit of a stick. there just to keep that in place. So there's me all set up with my mould. I've got everything sort of ready to start going. So here are my melted oils. They're a little bit hotter than I'd like considering I need to keep this nice and fluid but my lice solution and sodium lactate is a little bit cooler than I'd like so hopefully they'll even themselves out nicely. And then colours in here, ready to disperse, I've got some lime mica, and that comes from Pure Rock Colours. Here, I've already got some predispersed neon purple. I always predisperse my neons as well as my TD, and also some predispersed titanium dioxide. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this oil and just give this lime a little bit of a mix up. Okay, so there's my colours ready. I'm going to divide those evenly when I get round to it. And then fragrance oil, I'm using coconut lime fragrance oil from NI Candles here in the UK. That's a really lovely fragrance. I haven't gone too much for the obvious coconut colours. I didn't really want brown but I've got some lime for coconut lime and I've got some white for the white of the coconut and then I just added a purple because I kind of felt like it. So <laughs> I didn't I didn't want brown and that sort of stuff in there so that's what I've gone for. So that's my fragrance. Right so I'm going to need to split these off in thirds so what I'm going to do is just tip my lime solution in there. That's got sodium lactate in it as well. And then I'm just going to weigh that as it is before I start blending it up so I know how I want to split it off because I'm going to do it in thirds. So let me just go and weigh that. Okay, so in total that's 939 grams. So therefore I know I want 313 grams. And that'll be how I split everything out. Right, now I'm just going to blend this a small amount because this is something that I need to keep as fluid as possible but using the squeeze bottles is actually going to take me a little bit of time to do. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. It's probably not emulsified yet. Knowing my soap batter, that won't have done it. But I am conscious that I'm using TD, which I don't find for me accelerates too much because I don't blend it in. But neons do tend to accelerate, so I'm just going to be as careful as I can be to not get everything too thick. Right, so let's get these split out. Now, if you haven't emulsified 
properly or you don't think you have then make sure you give everything a jolly good stir before you start splitting stuff off otherwise you're going to be in trouble with your lye and your oils not being mixed properly. and added the fragrance oil and now transferred it into my squeeze bottles. My squeeze bottles aren't big enough for the whole lot so I will have to top them up but that's okay. So now I just need to start popping it into my mould. I'm going to try not to get my head in the way too much but can be a little bit tricky when I'm trying to look straight down. towards the end there but we'll see how it goes and that'll be interesting to see if it really matters if you have a really fluid trace I'd be banging it down so you've got a bit wibbly wobbly at the top there so let's get this pulled out There we go. <laughs> a little bit funny at the top. I think what I'll do is just scrape off these jugs. It won't make a very nice soap at the top, but I'll just scrape them off. At least I'll have some sort of bit more round soap going to at the top. So I'm just going to scrape the top off and just plop them into this space that I've got. I'm going to give that top bit, I'm not going to try not to go down to where I was, just this top bit just in here that I've just poured in little swirl I'm going to be careful because obviously I've got sort of purple and green which potentially could give rise to some brown right there we go so I'm going to now see pop that and we'll have a look at what we've got tomorrow here's my soap the next day now it's a little bit early to be slicing this soap but I thought I was just going to chop it into bars but I thought do you know what what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice it just so we can see with this pull through technique what sort of patterns we get because what happens quite often is you see that when people cut this type of soap they cut it at their standard bar width and some bars are great and some bars aren't great and that's because of where the colours sort of lined up as you actually cut the bars so if you can slice more slices then you're going to get to see a bigger arrangement of patterns so I'm just going to slice mine now I'm going to do this first one quite thick just because as we know with the first one it was at the bottom and so therefore we need to slice off an end but that's, that's alright isn't it, that's pretty cool right so what I'm going to now do is see what I get if I slice some thinner bits I'm just going to put my tool there Now the reason I'm not doing this for the challenge, or I'm, I'm, I'm sort of maybe changing my mind, is that the recommendation for the challenge was to use a different recipe to make these skins as it were. 
because a recipe with hard oils in and mine has got a lot of hard oils in is likely not to stretch over a soap and maybe you can see that can you see how that's because my recipe's got a lot of hard oils in it's actually cracking a little bit let's carry on aren't they? It's not bad at all. Now the reason why I've not followed the, let's say the tip, it's not, over, it's not something you have to do, it's a tip from the Soap Challenge Club to use a different recipe for these skins, is because in the UK we have a recipe that we have to stick to and that's it. So if I did do this, for the challenge and changed my recipe, it would mean I would make a bunch of soaps that I just couldn't sell. And we're even limited on giving away things. Ah, oh, these are coming out really pretty, I like these. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a plan and, and see if I can do something with these that might allow me to, even if I don't do the main challenge, it might able, enable me to do something in the bonus category. That I think is maybe the way I'm going to go. So let's get these skins sliced up. Okay, I'll just do a couple more because I think that's probably enough cutting. Now this may turn out to be the end of the video with me just cutting these slices. If I get a plan of what I'm going to do with these, then there will be more. So we will see. So I'm going to possibly say bye bye for now and carry on cutting these and if it's not bye bye I will edit this and obviously do something else with it. I thought I would just pop back on after I've sliced everything up and <laughs> look how many little slices I've got, I've got to work out something to do with these now <laughs> but um, I thought I'd just show you, do you remember at the end I just scraped out my jogs, blobbed it in and gave it a little swirl? And these are little slices that came out of that, they're quite cute as well, they would have made some nice soaps. So, lots of nice little swirly pattern that I've got, and I now just need to find something to do with them. I, I will have a little bit of practice, and if I can stretch them at all, I might do something for the challenge. Otherwise, I think what I might do is just use them in some way, just to make a, a nice little soap. And I might add that to this. If I get round to doing it before I have to upload this video, I will post it on here. Otherwise, maybe I'll update on my Instagram or Facebook or something to show you what I've done with them. But yeah, I quite like that. Hello, here I am again. Right, I'm going to try some of these little ball things. I may just do enough just to get a bonus entry or something in the challenge. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use some of the skins, those little slices that I made for the outside and some for inside. So my hands are nice and clean, so not to worry about any gloves or anything. And this is obviously saponified soap. So what I've got here is I've got about... For the challenge, a soap has to be at least 85 grams. I've got about 70 grams here. Yeah, 70 grams. And then by the time I get my two skins on, yeah, that takes me to 95, nearly 96 grams. So I'm within what's needed for the challenge. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to grab a couple of these little, what we're calling skins. Get some cute ones. That's a nice one. <laughs> They're all pretty cute, aren't they? I do like them. And what I'm going to do is just warm it a little bit between my hands. I'm going to keep these others covered up.
and the idea is you're going to take some soap now you could pour some round soap some balls we could have done anything as long as it had a rounded shape i'm just going to do some balls okay so i've softened that and now i'm going to warm this in my hands and the idea is to take these skins and scratch them over your ball. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to help me to stretch them. I'm going to use this little bath bomb mould just to sort of help me doing a bit of pre-shaping with these skins. So I'm just going to keep warming them in my hand. So I need to bend a little bit. I'm using cling film here just so it's I can keep manipulating the soap without damaging it okay I'm just trying to get this so that I can get the shape into a sort of severe shape rather than flat and I've got to be careful because I'm not using the appropriate recipe as it were for doing this because I, I didn't want to change my basic recipe for my soaps. Now in the tutorial they just got a ball of soap and stretched the skins over there. I, I, I just think mine perhaps a little bit too delicate so I'm just trying to protect them a little bit. Okay so there's the first one. I'm going to do the same for this second one. I won't put you through the pain of watching that. need to put these on a rope I'm going to put mine on a little bit of ribbon because I'm going to think of them like sort of tree decorations but my intention would be that someone would just pull that out before they used the soap so let's just pop this rope in the middle take my little can you see my shaped skin now <laughs> pop that over the top and then just gradually work it into place now again in the tutorial I can't remember if I said this already what Amy did was she made her little um, shred balls and left them for a while or certainly used harder shreds so the ball was more solid I kind of like the ideas of just using something that's really really fresh because then I'm more certain that it's actually all going to stick together sort of longer term as it were it may mean that I have to muck around and try and get my my sphere a bit rounder as I push it but that's okay Tessa, can we see that that's, it's kind of cute isn't it and that's the other side of it a bit dirty where I've been pushing it around but I can give those a little bit of a wipe off so I'm going to carry on making some more of those I'm not entirely sure how many I'm going to make it's quite a faffy thing to do and I know I like faffy stuff but um I, I don't know I might make a, about four or five of them we'll see so in the end I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those made and that's used up all the other slices, those things we were calling skins, um, in the inside and then those on the outside. So they're quite pretty aren't they? I mean they're quite a nice idea. I mean I don't know if anyone would ever hang a soap ball on a tree as a Christmas decoration but that's kind of what they look like. So again it's one of those things, it was, it, it, it was interesting to do. I originally wasn't going to do it because it seemed a little bit faffy to do as it were and it, and it actually was but again it's one of those things it's always good to actually do a challenge and just push yourself to do things that sometimes you may not want to do in the first place but yeah I, I do actually think they're really pretty. And here we are with a final photo of the soap. Um, 
Do you know how hard it is to make dangly balls of soap all face the same way? It takes blinking ages. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks, and that you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks a lot for watching. Happy soaping.